My research recently showed that empathetic care, so when a doctor displays empathy, it's as powerful as some drugs for treating some ailments like pain, depression, anxiety, irritable bowel syndrome. It's not hugely effective, but neither are the drugs. These ailments like pain, depression, anxiety, I'm talking about mild to moderate pain, mild to moderate depression, and mild to moderate anxiety, are extremely common and extremely costly, costing the NHS billions of pounds every year. So my research is looking into what are the most effective ways, the simplest, cheapest, and most effective ways of training doctors in empathy to display empathetic behavior. Now doctors are mostly, the vast majority are very empathetic. That's why they go into the profession in the first place. However, they're burdened with so much paperwork that they're unable to focus on patient-doctor communication. So whereas an old-fashioned doctor didn't have any drugs, any, any helpful drugs, all they had was their manner, their so-called bedside manner. Now, many, many powerful drugs, but we're overlooking the evidence base for empathy, and that's what I intend to do, to close that gap do the research, we're doing a large systematic review and meta-analysis of previous randomized trials that have demonstrated the benefits of doctor empathy, which also includes hopeful messages. So it's also been shown that when a doctor delivers a positive message, as opposed to an ambiguous message like, I don't know what's wrong, not a lie to the patient, telling the truth, but emphasizing the positive aspect, giving them reasons to be hopeful, if that's the truth. That can, the way it seems to work is, empathy can reduce the patient's anxiety, and reduced anxiety reduces pain. Giving a hopeful message activates the dopamine and endorphins in the brain, so that basically the body produces its own drugs that can help reduce pain. Some doctors are resistant to the idea of empathy training, and these, this resistance comes from two different sources. One is, for example, they think they're already doing it, and many of them are, but they're overburdened with too much paperwork with no time and energy left over to focus really on the patient-doctor communication. Others believe that it's not part of evidence-based medicine. So they think what we need is hard drugs which are going to fix real problems, and empathy is a bit too wishy-washy. I'm again, my research will close that gap by providing an evidence base for the benefits of empathic communication to patients.